Dude, I'm trying to walk, sister. I want to check on Lucy. Baby, back. Knock it off. Here, here, I'll give this to you. You can have that, okay? You play with that. Now look what you did. Not interested because you think you knocked the camera down. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, it's a frosty, cool morning here in Oklahoma. Um, I'm going to see if the donkeys want to want to get out and graze, see if they want to head to the back pasture. I think they're all tucked under the barn still, but uh, we've got a lot of help here, a couple extra ladies, because all of the Cameraman Ron t-shirts have arrived, and they're probably going to get the majority of them packed and shipped out today. I'll go in and check on them. Uh, which means I'm probably going to make them, you know, a couple post office runs. But uh, let's check on the animals first. Dude, what are you doing? That's not a good spot for you. Why do you think you belong on top of everything? Huh? Get off. Turkey? All right, where's everybody at? Oh, the girls heard me. Here they come. Good morning, Charlie. What's up, dude? Or dudette, whichever. Listen, I'm trying to be fair. I'm not trying to assign you your gender. You're just going to have to tell me one day if you're a boy or a girl when you lay an egg and, you know, at two years old. <laughs> Hi, Farrah. What are you doing this morning, hmm? You got frost on your head. Well, you got water. It was frost, probably. Hey, freedom! And Bree? You gonna let me pet you? No. You gonna tuck your head on your mom's butt? Hmm. Bree! Well. Where? Oh, the alpacas are still out there. I forgot. All right, girls, y'all want out? Let's go. Come on. Connect these two gates. Like that. All right, girls, come on. Let's go. <whistles> Charlie, watch out. The donkeys will run over you. Come on. Oh, my goodness. But the question is, is why did you catch the turkey? So I can hold her. You knew it. I usually catch her like when she's on mom's vehicle or trying to get in the building when she's working. This turkey is a mess, I'm telling you. She's she thinks she's a cat or a dog or something, I think. Uh I'm gonna walk the donkeys back to the to the pasture. What was that gunshot? Did you hear that? Yeah. That's close. Wait, isn't it I think it's um dough season now, ain't it? Uh yeah, actually I think today's the start of the holiday doe season. season. Deer. Somebody popped him a doe this morning, huh? Yeah. Hey, goats. Come on. <whistles> oh, yeah? Nobody's ready to move this morning? Where's the alpacas at? Huh? Come on. Everybody. Charlie. Look at him. Why are you chasing bear? Charlie, don't be mean to Bear. He's a pretty good guy. He looks out for you. All right. You do you, bro. We're all going this way. Okay. The alpacas are the only ones back here grazing already. Lucy's up on her feet, so that's a good thing. I wanted to get out here and check on Lucy early this morning. I haven't uh, uh, given her an injection today, obviously. So we've been keeping a pretty close eye on her. I showed you guys the other day that Lucy had a big puncture wound on the inside of her thigh, her back leg. And uh, Phoebe, get out from under my feet. 
and we've been giving her some uh, some pain medication and some antibiotic once a day and uh she's up on her feet so that's good lucy dude i'm trying to walk sister i want to check on lucy you can see she's still which lucy's had issues with her uh back legs with her hips for a couple of years now maybe it's not been two years a year and a half at least but that injury was preventing her from from walking she's still not wanting to put any weight on it but she's definitely up and moving and does not want me to catch her and give her a shot right now lucy you're gonna be all right she's still not putting any weight on it Gosh, that's not a good situation. Well, when she walks slow, she puts weight on it. When she tries to run, she just picks it up. But she is getting around. And uh, the first couple days, she was mostly just laying down. So improvement is improvement. It's just going to take a little while to heal. Barry, you going to eat some acorns with the goats? All right, y'all, you do your thing, do your grazing, eat your acorns, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Phoebe, you're not in charge. You'll never be in charge. today so the telephone company's out here doing locates for uh they've got a phone line that runs down the highway which we're not installing internet yet that's not why they're here they're doing a locate because uh the guy that's doing the fence for us is supposed to be here today so he called in a locate on there you know we don't, don't want to hit their lines and then as you can see the power company's here trenching their line so we're gonna have power soon It's not going to take these guys long to have that trench in and uh, they're laying conduit they're going to bury power they're going to bury the line so they'll come off of this pole where the transformer is and go across we'll do away with this pole here but while i'm here <laughs> i'm gonna pick up some trash but uh i need to uh take that sign that for sale sign off the shed that we bought i didn't think a whole lot about it because it's setting you know a couple hundred feet off the highway I think we've had four different phone calls. People wanting to buy the shed that we bought and uh, brought over here, but it was just, when I brought it over here, it's just like barely too tall. I to find something to stand on to take the sign down because the highway, I hear everybody calling in, calling us wanting to buy our shed. There we go. Oklahoma step stool right there. Now we won't be getting phone calls for people trying to buy our shed that we just bought. There we go. Well, we ran into a bit of a snag. This is, uh, <laughs> we thought we'd just hit rock here, but actually it is, this is, comes way up high, but this is the old foundation from the house that used to be here. You can see this is all man-made. This is all concrete that was put in probably a hundred years ago. And what they did really was just stack a bunch of boulders, a bunch of big rocks and pour concrete around them. But we can't get over that one. So they're gonna do what they can right now and have to come back with a uh, with a jackhammer and bust that out of there. All right, quick unexpected trip over to the merch place. The uh, power company, PEC, was not actually scheduled to be here or there until December 28th. And I'm filming this on December 18th. So they're 10 days ahead of schedule, which is, so great 
even though they're gonna have to bring back a different piece of equipment and bust out that that old foundation it's just part of it so we will have power really soon um but you know it's just part of living in a uh, a small tight-knit community and having family and friends all nearby i had no idea they were coming uh, i had no idea they were going to be there today but when they showed up and then the telephone company shows up and starts doing their locates you got neighbors and family and friends and just people driving by letting you call in and texting going hey what's going on there's a lot, lot of trucks a lot of vehicles at your place so anyways made it home i'm gonna walk in and check on the ladies and see how the uh cameraman ron shirt uh fulfillment's going and probably stay out of their way but we're gonna check on it still on your nest are you Gemma? don't get us bit oh Gemma, you're gonna you're gonna get it you need to leave her alone listen mama i don't think now's the great time to be hatching out babies i mean you do you and all but it's really weird that you're even laying eggs in december you know Gemma, you just need to back up okay i know you're mean and ferocious but look <laughs> she's like as long as you're close i'll be close too okay anyway on to the building all right let's see any work happening in here Mm -mm, none. Look at that. You know, you're pretty special. You got matching bags for the t-shirts. I sure did. Golly. Golly. So, you all about got all the Cameraman Ron t-shirts packed and out of here, right? No. No? Not even close. Well, let's see. There's three of y'all, a thousand t-shirt ordered. Yeah. That's only like 300 a piece. Only. Yeah. We, we also did a bunch for us. Yeah, you had like a hundred for us. Forgot about that. Mm hmm. So, uh, pecans. We are not going to be doing the pecan pieces until after the first of the year, right? That is correct. So, we will be getting more pecans, like normal, plus the pieces after the first of the year. Because mm -hmm. DJ feels overworked and underpaid. Definitely overworked. <laughs> not Tracy. She's all good. Mm -hmm. She's not overworked. Yeah, so they're not going to get them all done today, but uh, over the next couple days, we'll have all the Cameraman Ron t-shirts headed your way. So uh, I think she's printed out a ton of the uh, the shipping label, so I would say most everybody's getting emails saying that your uh, order's on the way. So we are working on it. I say we lightly, as fast as possible. Me and, me and Izzy are helping out, aren't we, Izzy? Yeah, we're helping about Yeah. Izzy's had a rough day, I can tell. She uh, slept all night in our bed, and then she's been sleeping all day. So, tough life. Tough life. Let me get that gate. Bring it on in. Baby. Hey, that's baby. Woo. All right, you're 
good. It's hard to find good, dependable help. I really like that guy, but he almost let the donkeys out. Well, Phoebe did get out, but uh, I got her back in, no problem. So it's good to have a good gate guy for you sometimes. I just have one question, though. Why aren't y'all out there eating on the green pasture? Got all that nice, good grass to graze on. And this is where everybody wants to hang out? All right. Whatever, Phoebe. Hey, Pepper. How are you today? Oh, yeah. Watch out, Charlie. Don't run over Pepper. So, like I said, there's a little bit of hay left here. Not a ton. I mean, I could wait a few more days, but I'm going to be busy, and we've got some rain coming in a couple days. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that out of there. I'll probably go use it in the barn for bedding. Cut the strings off put a new bale in. Good to go. Don't you go knocking the camera down. Phoebe. You jerk. Don't be knocking my camera down. Phoebe. All right, fine. I'll just have to hold it, I guess. Uh, yeah, actually, I did get a, a new pocket knife. Thanks for noticing. I've been using this for a while. Hey, stop biting my tripod. Here, here, I'll give this to you. You can have that, okay? You play with that. Now look what you did. Not interested, because you think you knocked the camera down. So yeah, actually, I did uh, come up with this pocket knife a while back. It's uh, made by Outdoor Edge. I use, I've used it for a while. And I like it because you don't have to sharpen blades. That's replaceable. And it's as sharp as a razor blade when it's new. I'm a little bit rough on pocket knives, but not sponsored in any way. But uh, pretty cool little, pretty inexpensive with replaceable blades pocket knife. Phoebe is chewing on my backside. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box down below if I can find this on Amazon or somewhere. It's a really handy little pocket knife and stuff like this will dull a blade in a hurry. So... I used to buy those little uh, foldable utility knives that you put a razor blade in, and that was what I carried a bunch around the farm. Phoebe, why? Why do you have to be such a pain? Huh? Such a pain. Anyways, it might be a little too late for Christmas, but a little pocket knife like that make a good Christmas present. Phoebe, stop. Knock it off. Where's that guy that was holding the gate? I need him to come back, hold the camera. As long as you don't mind being bitten on the back of the leg, about right in here by Phoebe. Use it. I'm trying to slip away. It's a good thing I got a gate guy. I can get out quick. Speaking of gate guy, where the heck did he go?
I wonder how cold the water is this time of year. You ever want to do one of those cold plunges? They're getting really popular, like ice baths and cold plunges. I don't know. This doesn't seem like a <laughs> doesn't seem like a lot of fun to me. You guys hear that? Is he honking? What he's honking that tractor on about? Probably honking at Phoebe. <laughs> She's always giving him fits. Making out of the pasture without the donkeys escaping, it's always a good day. Go park the tractor. I just got a uh, shipping notification. We we're actually waiting on a couple more boxes for the uh, Camberman Ron t shirt deal. Uh, and I got another delivery. It's actually for Houston. It's me and Houston. Uh, I really upset some of you, but so be it. Uh, we're gonna do a little, I, I don't know. I'll go get the back and show you what he got. And uh, we'll go from there. You know, moving forward, one of my plans for next year, for 2024, is to find a place, build a place, something. I need somewhere to store implements and machines. You know, we've got that side uh, lean-to roof over next to the, the barn. There's only so much I can put under there. But you want to put tractors and skid steers and machines and a lot of these implements that are really expensive you want to put them under cover the Oklahoma Sun and rain and heat and all the things is rough on it I really need to find somewhere on our property next year to build like a three-sided lean-to you know maybe 20 feet deep and I don't know 40 or 50 feet long something like that where you can back tractors and skid steers and you know machines under and have a place to get some of the implements out of the weather you know something like a brush hog it's, it's if it sets outside it's fine but like that big flex swing mower uh it's got all the hydraulic lines and all that stuff on it it's just the longer it sits out in the sun the shorter lifespan it's going to have the problem is, is i don't exactly live on flat ground and around the house there's not a great spot to build it close i'd like to you know in theory put it right next to my shop building but then we would lose pasture and lose things and I don't know plans for 2024 I guess on my camera set up where the beavers and otter have been coming through see if there's a lot of sign what did i see back there oh there's a blue heron way down there Okay, so about this package that I got, that I said some of you might not be happy with me about. Well, I'll show you. We've had these for years, don't get me wrong, but uh, I just decided to stock up and get several more and a few extra supplies because 
Well, open another box. Hang on. Kirsten's got a, a new hobby that he's really wanting to learn and get into. And uh, I fully support that. So, what do we have here? I bought another dozen. These are dog proof raccoon traps. And that kind of leads me into trapping. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail today, but I posted a little short video the other day um, of Houston at a uh, trapping clinic in Burke Burnett, Texas. And, and Houston learned a lot. I grew up trapping a little bit. My grandpa was a fur trapper for many years. He passed away when I was six or seven. I've got a, a cousin that just retired from the state. He was a state trapper, like a nuisance trapper for over 30 years. So it's kind of a family history thing. But uh, I bought another dozen dog proof raccoon traps. We're gonna trap a bunch of raccoons to help uh, the turkey population. You know, any ground nesting bird population is gonna benefit by removing some of the raccoons. But uh, Houston is also gonna get into doing some, and me, it's Houston and I, we do this together, but trapping hopefully some coyotes, maybe a bobcat, and uh, those otters and beavers for sure. And Houston's wanting to uh, kind of get into that. We found a tannery that'll that'll help us out. We're gonna get him some hides tanned and things. And there's basically, in my opinion, a lot of confusion and misinformation out there when it comes to trapping. Everybody thinks that you're that they're just evil, horrible mechanisms of destruction. And uh, while they can be dangerous, but they have to be treated with respect. So even like this raccoon trap. It has me. That raccoon reaches down in there, grabs a hold of the bait, sets the trap off. I didn't obviously snap it on my hand, but it is holding my finger in there. It's a dog-proof raccoon trap, meaning none of our dogs around the house will get caught in this. I, get, I would feel safe using this in my front yard. It's going to catch raccoons, uh, possum, skunks, different you know things that have more of a hand instead of a flat paw. But anyways, we're not going to be trapping on this video, but I do want you guys to know we are going to be doing some of that on this channel. And I think it boils down to education. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I feel like the the majority of people understand, but there's a lot of folks that, that don't. And I, I think when they hear about fur trapping and trapping animals, all they can think of is those big giant bear traps that have teeth that you set down in the dirt and they snap closed and they just destroy an animal we will be using some foothold traps i don't have one i didn't buy any in this box but i don't have one here we will be using some foothold traps that snap closed but they're they're safe and they're they're uh when used properly you can catch a bobcat hold him for you know 16 18 20 hours come and release him if you choose to if it's not your target so um it's not about using traps that are going to injure and break legs and do all those things so i promise you i guess i want i want to teach folks that that are less um less educated on the topic of fur trapping not that i'm an expert but it is something that houston wants to get into and learn about and if you you know look at it it that's that's what settled america that's what settled the west that's why you know daniel boone and all the explorers that that went west Speaking of Daniel Boone, why do you think my name is Daniel? My name, my full name is Daniel David Arms, but my nickname around here, you guys, I don't ever use it with you guys, but everyone in my local town knows me as Boone. My dad wanted to name me Daniel Boone. Kind of gives you a little bit of tip, a little bit of insight into my family history. But anyways, those guys explored and moved west, trapping beaver and all those things, and that was their their currency. They trapped beaver, you know. Um, scraped them clean, let them dry out, and they had those beaver pelts and different animals. And that was what they used to, to trade for goods because they didn't have, you know, money. And if they were trading with the Native Americans, Native Americans didn't need money, didn't want money. But beaver hides or different things, they could use those as currencies. Anyways, I'm, I'm not, it's not a history lesson. But I just want you guys to know for uh, the next, let's see, through January and February in Oklahoma's fur bear season. So we're going to do some trapping. We'll have some trapping videos. And if you're not comfortable with those, just scroll past. You know, I posted that short video the other day and so many people, you could just see the, the, I won't say confusion, but lack of education. People that thought it was just a cruel, inhumane thing. And while that is possible, if done properly, it's a very safe and effective way of 
controlling populations of wildlife. And uh, we want to remove raccoons. We want to remove possums, maybe a few skunks if they come along, because those are the predators that are going to, that are going to destroy the turkey nest. When on the turkeys, we've got a turkey sitting down here. That's a domestic pet turkey. But when those wild turkeys start sitting on their nest, that hen's got to sit there for 28 days before she hatches out poults that are this big. And the survival rate of those turkey nests, when you have an uh, out of control number of raccoons especially, uh, there's very low survival rate. There's been major studies done on this stuff. And deer are dramatically affected by coyotes. When, when the deer start to fawn in the spring, those coyotes pick off a ton of those little bitty fawns. And if we can remove, you know, a good number of coyotes from the property, then that helps um, boost those, those, those deer numbers. Plus, coyotes are obviously predators to goats and animals that we have here on the farm. So, anyways, just letting you guys know, we will be doing some trapping over the next couple months. If you don't like those videos, scroll on past. We're not only going to be about little happy-go-lucky farm animals as much as I love them. That's that's not who I am completely. And we show you guys our lifestyle and the way we live, whether it's hunting, fishing, trapping, you know, talking to Charlie, the, you know, goofy emu or packaging our merchandise, whatever it is. I just want to bring you guys along and show you our lifestyle. So anyways, I don't know if I completed my mission today or not because Captain Ron said do something today to make somebody smile because you just never know. It might change the world. Maybe you made one or two of you smile with my stupid little goofy video today. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.